It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and Suleiman Akonde, a public affairs analyst, joins us uh, on this at uh, this particular point as we look at uh, statistics from the National Bureau right there. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, about 130 million Nigerians are poor and are living in poverty. It, it, it was actually said and reported in the 2022 multi-dimensional poverty index survey that was released in the FCT. The MBS said the figures represent 63% of the nation's population. He yeah, added that poverty index is mostly experienced in rural areas, especially in the north, with women and children being the most affected. Meanwhile, the measure used to calculate the feature or figures, I beg your pardon, was based on multi-dimensional poverty index, that's the MPI, with five components, which is health, living standard, education, security, and unemployment. Well, according to the survey, over 50% of children across the country are affected by poverty. Also, multi-dimension poverty index stood at 27% in Ondo State, the figure is estimated at 90% in Sokoto State, making it the worst hit by socioeconomic issues. Nigeria so far had maintained the infamous title of world poverty capital, according to the World Bank, since 2016. The World Bank data had showed that in every 10 Nigerians leave, that leave below the poverty line of $1.9 uh, per day. And this is where we have uh, a guest joining us, Suleiman Akonde. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you for having me. Well, I, I'd like to ask you, what are your thoughts generally? When you saw the statistics, because it's gotten a lot of Nigerians talking, what was your first impression? Um, good morning, viewers. Um, first and foremost, it's a very sad um, situation. And um, it should give each and every one of us concern. What happened is that uh, poverty has a kind of um, multifaceted and dimension. It affects people in lots of ways. I do tell people that even when the pain of poverty is the same, the experience from individuals and places are always uh, different. And one thing about poverty is that uh, Poverty can even be said that to be the root of other problems that we have been being faced as a country. That is from terrorism, climate change, infant and maternal mortality rate. All these things can be linked to, uh, linked to poverty. Because um, unfortunately, in the last two, three years, we have been faced with a lot of challenges. Actually, most of these challenges are global. That is from the issue of uh, COVID-19, and of recent, the issue of flood that has ravaged the entire country. What this does is that it only makes the poor to be more poorer. So it is a very sad one to see. But, um, uh, I mean, it's very sad. Uh, too many persons are not very excited about what has happened. But how do we explain um, this? because there are several initiatives by this current administration, the Buhari's uh, government, with um, policies targeted at job creation, also targeted at you know, lifting a lot of persons from poverty. Once upon a time, 10.5 million persons were lifted out of poverty and fact-checked, proved that we had 10 million persons who slipped into poverty. That was about in 2021. So with all of these policies that we have, I'd like to begin to mention some of them. Uh, for instance, you have uh, an initiative by this administration, 70, 75 billion National Youth Investment Fund. You also have the MSME's Survival Funds. These are initiatives just to, you know, cut poverty, um, create jobs. You have the NPower, you have the Agro Program, you have the um, food initiative uh, in schools, feeding the children, and what have you. There are several programs and policies by this government. How come we have 133 million Nigerians, or 130, whatever figure you put at, 
still living in poverty? Yeah, um, to be fair to the present uh, administration, they have a robust plan for the social um, the the social scheme that is uh, being anchored by the uh, Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management. But I must tell you this: there is a lot, there is some success story attached to some of these um, uh, social uh, investment program. But personally, I felt they get it wrong in some other places of implementation. You can see if you look at the first set of the empower people, it was a very it was a success story. But there is one thing we must understand: what does life hold for these people? after exiting the program. I think where they really got it wrong is that there is no proper sustainability plan to make sure that after these people pass through these social intervention programs, they become very, uh, they become um, very independent and ability to feed uh, for themselves among other things. And I think another problem is this: most of these programs, when they are being rolled out, it is not really getting to the main person. That is the poor, the poorest of the poor that really need uh, this program. So what happened is that you know a lot of factors will now come in. People are jacking the program. People bringing their friends and relatives into the program. People that don't even need it in the first place. So you will be surprised. I think there is a, some revelation in some state. Will you believe that some people that are even working already? Apply for the Empower program. People that are even any, the Empower is supposed to be at maybe 30,000 naira or so. Will you be, you'll be surprised that someone that is even earning above 100k apply for the same program? So this boils down to the fact that these programs is not well tailored so that the right people will get the intervention. The same thing to the market money. To be fair to, to this government, they have rolled out one of the biggest and the largest um, social intervention program in the history of this country. But the problem, problem, and the problem is this: after this program, what lies ahead of people that benefit from this program? The Empower program is there. You have the Batch A, Batch B, Batch C. You know, see, uh, this thing and uh, the poverty uh, did not go away. So we must have a lasting solution to get all these uh, all these things up. That is from the implementation stage down to the exit stage whereby there will be a kind of sustainable program for those that are living. And there should also be data to monitor what happened to these people. How are they doing? What was their life? Um, what um, their life? What is it like before they come into the program? What is the life value now? So that we can now understand, are we really exiting this? It is a very sad occurrence. And I believe the right ministry and the right prior starters need to see, um, go back to the drawing board, have a new way of solving this problem. And I think something strikes me. I think there is a famous uh, quote that most of this program, the problem we used to have is that someone says that you cannot take people out of poverty by putting money in the hand of the poor. Most of this money, when it gets to the hand of the poor, it just becomes a means for them to sustain. They will just eat. After eating, life continues again. You understand? It, eating is for sustainers. It doesn't really take people out of uh, Poverty. So we must get something that is sustainable that can give them life aside just eating, clothing and shelter. So but let's talk about that, you know, because uh, a lot of persons have queried exactly the fact that we've had several policies. If you look at it from inception, it would not be the first time that you have all of the social intervention programs and all of it is meant at taking people from poverty. I mean, moving the people away from poverty, from the operation Feed the Nation, Green Revolution, Better Life for Women, Family Economic Advancement Program. These are all poverty elevation programs. But how far have we fared as a people? So, so do you think that the issue right here is um, with the policy? that the policy does not reflect the needs of the people, and that's why we're still in poverty. Yes, I think that was it. The policy does not really reflect the need of the people. And I think there should be a kind of need assessment to really know what are the needs of these uh, people. I can tell you um, why it is very true. Look at the statistic you rolled out earlier. Um, different parts of this country has different problems facing them. 
that is a policy or an intervention you roll out in a part of uh, in a particular part of the country that particular policy may not work in another part of the country let me give you a very good example now i did a um a clean energy intervention for a particular village here in abuja what happened is that we're into uh, the foundation is into clean energy that is to supply people with solar energy that's alternative power source now, in our experience over there, I get to understand that you must understand the problem of people before you even come in to provide a solution so that you won't be giving them medicine for headache, whereby what is really happening, what is really wrong with them is a stomachache. So when we get to the village, we took to them solar panel so that they can have a clean energy, have um, an alternative source of power supply. So after giving them, we install it in virtually almost all the houses in the village. So after three months, we need to go back to at least evaluate how far this intervention has been working. Uh, you will be surprised that when we get back there, some of these solar panel and some of even the bulb will attach to it. Some of them are nowhere to be found. So after meeting the villagers and ask them what happened to the solar panel we installed, they say that some uh, we find out that some of these solar uh, panels have been sold, while some have even started using theirs for what is not meant for. So it was after the need assessment we get to understand that it is true you can provide solar panel for these people to serve as alternative self source of energy. But poverty is staring at them in the face. You are providing solar panel whereby these same people have not eaten and they see value in that your solar panel. Instead of using it for what it is made for, what they will do instead is that they just went on to go and sell the solar panel to solve their immediate problem, which is they are hungry. So we will not get to understand that if we really want to solve problems like this, we need to solve the problem of poverty first. That is, if people are poor, what you should do here is that when you solve the problem of poverty, it solves a lot of other problems. That is just it. And one thing we must understand is this. Poverty kind of is an influencer. You understand? It's an influencer to a lot of other problems. That is from terrorism, uh, crime, name it, you understand? So, we need to get this thing right from the policy stage. We need to go back to the drawing board. What are the lessons learned from all these social intervention programs so that we know what to really do for the people that meet their yearnings and aspirations? So, but are you saying that we don't know what the people need? Is it that we as a country, and especially those, uh, the political or the ruling class, is not in the know of exactly what the people need. Is, is that the issue? Or is that we're not willing to do what we should do? It is just the will, you understand? We really know what the people need. Are you getting it? You see, there are, even in, um, there are social classes who can decide to not group these two people into social, social classes. Okay, let's have a kind of, these are, these are the poor, this is the poorest of the poor. Okay, in this particular locality, what did they Talking to someone the other time, I say one funny thing about this country. We have people who now call the urban poor. The urban poor is even so funny in the sense that the urban poor has access to all basic infrastructure of life. Every day he moves, he walks on a good road, he sees pipe bomb water, he sees a good car, he even uses the lift, he uses the basic necessity of life. But down in the pocket, he is poor. He will not meet other facets of life. That is an urban poor. That is a social intervention for someone that is urban poor would also be different from people that are rural poor. That's what I'm saying. That you know different intervention and what to do for each of these uh, people. So the essence now is that we need to go back down to the program, but the policy is okay. I, I, I can tell you because from the empower, the first batch of the empower is a success story. A lot of them will come out and tell you that, oh, this is what they have been able to do. But I can tell you from... No, but, but, but how, how, can, how can the policy be okay? Because you also have said that the policy is not okay. And it probably just looks as if we're contradicting, you're contradicting, you know, what you're saying at the same time. Because if you look at some of these policies, let's even highlight them. These are policies that are chunking monies into the hands of the people. And if you look at the index, uh, you know, of this survey, you find out that there are issues, there are very critical issues. Standard of living. So when you talk about the standard, how do you measure the standard of living? Standard of living is measured by your access to, you know, uh, portable water, electricity, amongst other issues. 
you, you just move around, you see people who, up until now, in 21st century, people are still drinking water from the stream. And yeah, this, 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 these are the issues. So how then is Empower solving the problem? Does Empower solve the problem of having a motorable road? Go through the roads, even the, in the urban areas. You still can't even have a 20-minute ride because there are potholes everywhere. So how, how does Empower solve that? How does even giving children food, uh, maybe uh, biscuits or what have you, during the day solve the problem of poverty when their parents are not able, you know, to provide the basic needs and things that they need for health and what have you? Look at the health infrastructure. So I, I really like to understand if, 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 if really you're saying that it's, it's not the issue of policy formulation because we have told this line every other time. We, we come up with policies to, to throw money to people and, you know, give them handouts, 5,000 monthly. Does that really solve the real issue? Yeah, I can tell you because uh, policy has never been our problem in this country. Our problem has always been implementation. You will be surprised that if you have access to some of these um, policy documents that create some of this program, you have fantastic idea in there. But the problem is, as I've told you earlier, this money or this social intervention is getting to the wrong hand. That is by influence, by external forces. It may be politicians or those saddled with the responsibility of get, making sure that this thing gets to the right people. Now, you must understand one thing. Most of these uh, special interventions, they are designed for various classes of the society. For example, now, Empower is mostly for some um, graduate and at least people that are... Um, have at least secondary school uh, certificate. You have the SPW from the uh, special uh, something work program by the Ministry of uh, Labor, among other things. Then you have the market and uh, trade that money, you have the market to make money and the likes. Now, the thing is this, I can tell you there are parts of this country that the whole um, capital, some of these people even need to set up a business is less than 10,000, 20,000 and the likes. But when the money is not getting to the right people, it becomes a problem. You understand? So when it comes to implementation and enforcing standard, that is where we are getting on that. The government needs to sit right and make sure that the right people get the money so that the wrong people, the money doesn't get into the wrong people's hand. And uh, moving away from that, this also is very sad, as I said earlier, that 130 million poor Nigerians, that's a very bad one. Because I mean, you know one funny thing again? Most of these um, poor people, they are young people that are even less than 30 years of 30 years of age. Right, if you go to some local government or some, um, in this part of the country, you have places that they don't even have access to portable water, they don't even have access to um, uh, health, they don't even have access to good road, motor motor road. So all these social intervention programs needs to be rejected. And I've told the people I've had a lot of um, argument if this is really working or not. And I said earlier that what really happened is someone, someone once says that what we should be doing is that you don't put money in the hand of these people. When you put money in the hand Suleiman, of someone that is on... Suleiman, so I think yeah. we're still saying one and the same thing here that uh, if we have all of this social intervention program, how come you still have 133 million Nigerians in poverty? What exactly are we doing with it? How, how has all of this social intervention program addressed the critical issues that have been mentioned, which is an index. We have talked about power, education, you know, standard of living, healthcare, and what have you. It brings me back to you know, the next part of this conversation, which is about, uh, if you look at the index as well, it, it says that those in the rural community are the ones who are suffering the most in terms of poverty. And so do you think that the local government as a third tier of government has lived up to expectation of bringing development to the people? Uh, not at all. And we can't really um, blame them. The local government has been rendered very uh, incapacitated, should I put it that way, in this part of the world. Then look at this now. How many local governments even have independent finance, whereby they can spend money on their own? Which local government is carrying out a program on their own? So one thing, one good thing we need to do is if we want to move away from all these problems, we need to take the government very close to the people. That is by empowering the local government. The right law needs to be looked into. Look, there is uh, the other time, I think the local government autonomy law 
law is still yet to be signed into uh, in, into law, whereby it gives power to every local government in this country. I do tell people, well, well, you raise some of these issues now. The issue of um, primary primary health care, the issue of um, out-of-school children, among other things, all these fall into the, within the purview of the local government. So the local government, as it is today, has not been living to its expectation. And we all know why. Some of these local governments are just a tool in the hand of some of these governors. So how come, you know, the uh, constitutional review, uh, I mean, that ha was ongoing, had not addressed some of these concerns that you have mentioned? Yeah, they did not get the required vote to make sure that uh, local government have full autonomy. Why? I think if I'm getting it, if I get it right, I think I only about 13 states out of the 36 uh, uh, state House of Assembly signed and endorsed that there should be local government autonomy. The other state did not um, give approval to that. Hmm. Well, we have to go now. Suleiman, thank you so much for being part of the show. Uh, we can only uh, continue to talk about these issues, and we hope that those who are uh, calling the shots would actually take the right action. And that's the only way, uh, you know, we'll get out of all of this. But we appreciate you, Suleiman Akonde, for being part of the show. Thank you very much. Uh, Suleiman Akonde is a public affairs analyst. He joins us this morning from the FCT. And that's it on our first major conversation. We take a break and when we return, we'll be looking at the World Cup just a few more days before it begins. What are the expectations? Stay with us.